Hi, and uh, I'm Tom, your host and DM, and today we're going to be talking about the three primary typings in uh, Pokemon. That, of course, being the starter typings, uh, fire, water, grass, your Bulbasaur, your Squirtles, your Charmander. Uh, I'm here today with Lavix. Yes, up. Zerayu. Hi. Vilti. God damn it, Vilti. Little David. Hi. And Jordan. Oh hi there. Oh hi there. And uh, I'm I'm feeling feeling kind of froggy. I feel like we should start with water types. Froggy. Oh, God. Go kill yourself. It's because that they're amphibians. That's a good joke. Oh my God! It's 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 like you guys saw through my pun or something. I can't imagine how you'd know about it. That was well, it wasn't too murky. Oh God damn it! That now I see how bad it was when you said it. <laughs> High five, little David. High five. <laughs> all right, all right. So water types, a little background on them. Uh, like wa water types are a very interesting, uh, very interesting fish to skin. They're bipolar oh, by nature. A lot. Of, I know. I can't stop now. I just can't do it. They're bipolar by nature because you got to look at the way water itself works. It's it can be a nice gentle tide. A placid lake, or it can be a goddamn hurricane, not hurricane, a typhoon, tsunami. crashing waves, tsunamis, whirlpools. Very destructive forces are very calm forces. A lot of the ways, when you look at water type Pokemon, you can see beautiful, elegant, patient Pokemon like a melodic. Or very dangerous, powerful creatures like a Sharpedo or like a Blastoise. That thing, I mean, it's got cannons on its back. How much more of an example do you need about its power than that? But Turtles. at the same time, it's a turtle. Goddamn turtle. How much more patient do you need to be than to be a goddamn turtle? So you look Swap. at that, you understand that. Now, that going said, water types can also be a bit easier to deal with than the than majority of the other typings. That's why you see a lot of water types as, you know, water types one of the original starter types. It's, it's pretty easy to get along with a water type. It's not too, not too much work. You make a friend out of water type. You understand that they both have the power to destroy and heal. I mean, in that type of situation, not heal as in the actual literal "I'm healing you" situation, but in like the friendship patient way. You know, be able to heal the you know, scars of loneliness, things of that nature. So, with that kind of background on water types, uh, I've got two primary water types here with us today. I've got Lavix. And I've got hey. Zoraiu. And Lavix, bub, I mean, you've you've had a quite a minute. I mean, how many mudkips have you had in your in your Pokemon career by this point? Uh, like, well, I marched on, and I mudkip, and then I had Kipler. Yeah, you've had three of them. I mean, Zoraiu, you just had a retarded Piplup that would drool over water. And I had a Totodile, thank you. I'm sorry, and I forget I about love that, that one. that Piplup. I know you did. You loved your little retarded Piplup. And by the way, I do like Mudkips. Oh my god. You're Gun. one of those people. <laughs> You're one of those. I heard you like Mudkips. I do. Oh <laughs> god. So like what do you what do you what do you both think are some things about water types that, you know, somebody should know? Well, with all the water types I've had, they've been, you know, Really good friends. They're like bros. Like, every Mudkip, you know. And my other ones, like Starmie, I had once. You know, there's really great people to be around. Not too much hassle, you know. They just go with the flow. I think it'd be kind of wishy-washy at times as well. Uh, true. It's, it's kind of it's kinda funny how all these, uh, all this information about water types is kind of puns, but that's kind of... It's kind of the beautiful thing about water types. They're very punny Pokemon. I mean, when you really think about it, like he was talking about, they go with the flow. It's a very... You can somewhat go with like a Buddhist mentality about that when it comes to water types. Instead of crashing up against a rock, they can either crash against the rock, break it down, or they can just go with the flow and go around it. Go around the resistance. Go around all the hassle. Which is something I don't think a lot of water types really get their due about. I don't think people really see how... How universally worth it they are to uh, to the world. Okay, so water types they're they're effective against fire, ground, and rock. Now we can understand how they're effective against fire. 
it, you, you douse the fire, you put it out. I mean, thank, thank you, explain it, for the, it's that done. For me, yeah. Hang on, just make sure I know, Vilti, that you can be a little slow at times. That's yeah, all right, all right. So, ground types that can be more of a harbinger to the way the world works. So, water destroys, it erodes away the ground, it shifts the continents. The water itself is almost the blood of the world, and the ground is the flesh. And so you, we kind of see how that works well with that, how water can be effective against ground. And then you got rock types. So it's kind of the same situation. you got the rock. It beats against the rock. It moves the rock. It goes around. A lot of the same reasons it's effective against ground are the same reasons it's effective against rock. But we go to the weaknesses of it. And the weaknesses are... Uh, are pretty pretty nice. It's only two natural weaknesses are electric and grass. Now we'll be covering grass later in this video, which I'll, I'll be covering in a pretty good depth since I am a primary grass type. And electric, electric is pretty easy also to understand why it would be super effective against water too. I mean, water isn't a good conductor of electricity. We can understand all these reasons why their attacks are super effective against the different ones. But when it comes to the mentalities of a water type, we're talking about how they're patient but yet destructive, how they can take a lot of crap but then be quick to anger, how them, they themselves are a, a, a Hippocrates typing. How does that actually clash against the uh, typings? Uh, Livex, I mean, you've had a lot of, lot of experience with things like this. So I'd, I'd ask you how, how, you're, how's, how have you saw like, uh, water types and things like that? Well, normally... It's just, you know, do what you want to do, you know, have fun. But when you do meet resistance, it's almost like there's an instant shift where, you know, from calm to storm almost instantaneously. And then you just try and break through the obstacle with all your force. All right, all right. Yeah, I, I can see that. Zarai, you of course, you, you didn't have a lot of time with your water Pokemon, which was sad. That was a that was a kind of a sadness of that uh, session of Poke D and D. Yeah. But I mean, with the time you had with them, it was a pretty decent one. I feel like you had a pretty good bond going on with your water types. Yeah. Had an extreme appreciation for water. <laughs> <laughs> I, the power I, of water. I managed to, you know, they they do what they do. They're just kind of chill. They go with the flow, as Slavic said. You kind of go with the flow with them. Like a beach, not like a beach, like a ship on the currents. Pretty much. All right. Now, I'll, I'll go ahead and speak a little bit more in detail just about how their personalities uh, deal with these typings, the weaknesses and the strengths. Uh, of course, the strengths being, you know, fire types. So uh, we'll be covering it a little bit later, but they can be a bit passionate. And when you're passionate and you've got a goal, if somebody's willing to just shift to be on your side or shift away to be on your side, it's pretty easy to get around that person to be effective against it. Ground types, which we'll be covering in a later uh, episode, uh, they can be very patient. Now, when I say patient, I mean patient to a T. I mean the ground gets walked on all the time. Well, water can be patient, but it can also be forceful. So it changes from being patient to forceful. And that, and then it starts eroding and breaking down the ground. And the same thing with the rock. They can also be patient. So understand how those mentalities, the way the actual personality of water type can affect those, at least in those small examples, which uh, we'll cover later on. Uh, now, their weaknesses to grass and electric. Uh, electrics uh, can sometimes be a bit... Well, not sometimes. They are main, mainly attention whores, which is just the truth of nature. An electric type can be is a bit of a showgirl mentality. It's got a little bit of the fire-type passion, but when you just draw attention to yourself at a constant basis, it's the same thing as going to a beach to see the beach but looking at the beach girls. The water really isn't that much of an issue all of a sudden. It's the girls next to the water. And it's kind of the same understanding with, the, with lightning types. That's how they get over on their uh, strengths on the water types, which will be in more detail later. Uh, grass types, of course... I'll save for uh, later when we actually talk about them in detail. Now, I feel I feel like there's something we're missing here about. There's something important that needs to be said. And Zarayu Lavix, what 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 do you think? I, I'm drawing a blank on something. What do you think it might be? Well, to be a good water type trainer, you need to learn how to control your waves, as it were. 
You need to know when to be calm, when to be forceful, and, you know, not to add too much water. You kind of get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, I, that, that's what it is, training the little fuckers. Because, I mean, most of them can start off quite small until you get to, like, a Whelmer, and that's kind of... All right, that's a bit of show. Oh, yeah, it's like a magic cap to a Gyarados. Huge step up. A huge step up, which is which also uh, that's also a good example once again of this passive and uh, forceful nature we've been talking about. You got your magic card being pretty passive, then it evolves and becomes a force of nature, essentially a Gyarados. You know, just a little bit more proof proof for the pudding there about the uh, typings and the way we view them. Well, uh, I, I feel pretty decent about that. Any training tips for uh, the boys before we go on to the next type? Be careful with a move called Water Worlds. <laughs> you don't uh, want to sink things. Please be God, Lavix, tell us about Water World. It's a really subpar movie, Tom. Ah, <laughs> uh, you shut your mouth. Water, I love Water World. But uh, I won't give too much away because I'll most likely end up using it in the campaign. But it makes a lot of fucking water very quickly. And if used in the wrong spot, could probably kill everything in the area. Just through sheer volume. Yes, it's almost like it was once incorrectly used and became a hazardous danger. I don't know what people. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let Also, don't be a rock in the way of your Pokemon. Also, a very important tip for ground trainers dealing with water trainers, tilt the mech. <laughs> oh god damn it well that, that'll that's a story for another day that has to be told which i'm sure will be brought up once we get to the ground typing most and definitely maybe, maybe even the oh, electric please. training yeah uh, yeah all right so uh with that eh, let's go on over to let's go to fire types because fire types are i said in an earlier uh i, I said in an earlier randish and when we were recording these, that dark types can be a sort of a uh, centralized point of conflict in these D&Ds. But fire types can be up there too, but they're, they're only up there for a specific reason. And that specific reason being that a lot of goddamn forest fires get started by people with fire type Pokemon. Or just but only when I'm not around fires. with a mudkip. True. Only time. You see me smiling here, Tom. Only mudkips can prevent forest fires. Remember, like kids, smiling, only but... mudkips can prevent forest fires. God, I'd kill myself if that was the actual slogan. That's horrible. <laughs> All right, so now the only primary fire type that we have to talk today is Frostwolf. And Hello. Frostwolf, uh, uh, it, he's... I'm, I'm going to start off by saying the last time he was in a pokey d d well, not the last time, the time before that, he burnt himself to death. Now, that being said, he was stupid, but he still knows fire types, which is why we have him here today. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Yeah, it, it's absolutely no problem, kind of. So, a little premise on fire types before we start going into this. Fire types can be pretty personality heavy, and by that I mean they're passionate little guys. Uh, you have po fire types that are passionate about their friends. You've got fire types that are passionate about burning things. You have fire types that are passionate about something, and that's where that fire comes from. Their passion, their un, their unextinguishable desire an unextinguishable interest for something in their lives. And that's where you get fire-type personalities from, too, is you get these people who are right in there. They have a passion, and whether that passion is something they know about or maybe their passion is just hanging out with their friends, they have that passion, and it's recognizable to people. For example, Frostwolf here, he does. I wouldn't say he has an outright passion that we can see, but there's one thing about Frostwolf that definitely says, oh, he's a fire type, and that's the fact that there's no one on this planet like Frostwolf to us for just the sheer amount of stupidity that he can bring upon us sometimes. And I don't mean that to be offensive. I just mean, God bless you, Frostwolf. You're, you're, you're a funny guy sometimes. You're sometimes. So Thank you. I try. By being stupid. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's honestly the truth of it, which, you know, once again, I don't mean it as an insult. I just mean it. That's, that's how we know you, and he knows we love him to death. 
All right, so Frostwolf, with your time, you've had a lot of fire Pokemon, a lot of fire Pokemon. Yeah. Why don't you Why don't you tell us about some of the some of the things you've had with your with your fire Pokemon, some of the lessons you've learned, some of the well, forest you've burned down. It was only once. I've done the other one technically. Yeah, uh, yeah, you did too. That one time. Okay, but anyways, uh, fire types. They're just meant to be your bros. That's the best way I can describe them. And, like, they all have their own sort of thing they like to do. Like, one time I met a guy whose Growlithe was into, like, accounting and stocks. And he wore, like, a little tie. And things like that. And, like, the thing about fire types, there's two types they can be described. There's outer fire types and inner fire types. Inner fire types are the fire types from, like, inside the Earth's core. Or, like, not the core, but I mean, like, the mantle and all that. And then there's the outer ones. And their passions are both different from each other. The ones on the outside more would have a passion for something that could be described, like, sports, playing around, all that. But, like, the ones on the inside only know fire and have been desensitized by only being inside the earth and know more about have a passion better for burning things and just fire itself that's that's pretty good that's pretty good descri description honestly uh frostwolf has had one of the esteemed uh the esteemed opportunities of being ac actually able to talk to the fire gym leader in in the world so he's he's got a he's got a pretty good grasp on it which of course why i have him here today uh honestly at that point there's Frostwolf explained it pretty well. That is the truth. The two typings of fire Pokemon pretty much delve into just those two subcategories, the inner fire types and then your outer fire types. It's a, it's pretty much the difference between a Pokemon on a volcano and the Pokemon in the volcano. Both fire types, but they live in two different worlds, so you can expect two different passions, two different world uh, ideologies. You can see a lot of differences, but at the same at the same time they're passionate about something, which is something I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna drill into this conversation. That passion is what is important with fire types. If you can't have that passion with them, how are you gonna connect to them? And if you can't connect to them, how can you truly utilize them in that kind of fashion? Now, fire types have a very, a, a very nice thing about them. You can notice in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of descriptions of Pokemon, particularly Ponytails and Rapidashes. Uh, whenever the Pokemon trust you, whenever they become, uh, to quote Frostwolf here, your bro, don't feel the flames anymore. You don't really feel their fires anymore. Now, that wouldn't make a lot of sense if it was like a natural fire, because no matter what, you get burnt by the fire. But if that Pokemon's flame comes from their passion, if that passion is really what's driving their fires inside of them. If they've got a fire in their belly, so to speak, you could kind of understand why they'd be able to do things like that, which is why in PokéD&D, a pretty common occurrence is that if there's a flame on a Pokémon's body and that fire Pokémon trusts you, you can't get burnt by it. For example, a like I said, the Rapidash, you could ride a Rapidash and not get burnt by its fiery mane. You could pet a Ponytail and not get burnt by the fires on its body. And that's just something I wanted to specifically mention as I can see that being kind of a point of contention for people owning fire Pokémon. Now, with that being said, I I feel like I feel like there we should end it like we have been with uh with how we did with the water Pokemon. Frostwolf, do you see any like uh, good training tips you could give though? I mean, I know I'm not gonna lie, you haven't had the best the best timing and the chances with your fire type Pokemon, but I'll be damned if those Pokemon didn't love you. And that yeah. itself is something else that I mean, you you you've had a pretty good pretty good time with what fire pokemon you've had so any training tips for uh people listening um when fighting check your surroundings yeah <laughs> don't don't set forests on fire because i've made that mistake once already or angry southern men's barns yeah that one too i'm 500 or 500,000 five uh yen you're, you're half a million yen in debt yeah yeah yeah. Also, don't tell your Pokemon to napalm things. Hey, he was psychotic. I didn't have that much control of that. Ah. Uh, I told him to attack. <laughs> shh, 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 Tom. Shush. It's fine. It's fine. 
All right, so okay. I, we'll we'll end talking about fire types with that, just because they're the the typings in this uh, in this episode they're they're not very deep, which is the thing about them. Water types have a bit of depth, but that's the why they're starter types. Like They've a deep a ocean. Few... Oh, deep ocean Pokemon. Do we uh, have to get back to open heart like the sky? <laughs> What? God, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, not that type. again for... Well, we're saving that for flying types, which isn't even, like, oh, God, I hated yeah. it when you guys were talking about that's what flying types were. High five, Russell. I know, it's still just fun to say. Oh, God. So, yeah, like like I was saying, the starter types, they have a bit of depth to them, but they're not so in-depth that you're going to have to have years of training to really be able to use one, which is why they're starter types. Pick up a fire Pokemon, and most likely, if it's been chosen by a gym, or not a gym, but a lab and a professor to be a starter type Pokemon, you have a pretty good chance of that Pokemon loving you, just the way a water type's easy to get along to, with. And the same reason, and which we're going to start covering now, grass types. Now, grass types are my forte, because I'm a primary grass type myself, and I am also the DM, so I know about as much as God knows in this one. Now, grass types are beautiful creatures. I'm going to have a bit of bias at this point, but that being said, you'll pretty much be able to pick up when I say it. Grass types of soldier, or grass types and grass Pokemon are social Pokemon. That's why you see them living in clusters. That's why you see grass Pokemon always together. That's why you see migrations of grass Pokemon. They're social Pokemon. Now, there's a few grass types out there that break them all. There's always an example of the rule being broken. But with grass types... They're always harmonious, which is also why you notice that there's a lot of grass moves that grass Pokemon are immune to. They live together so frequently, you're not going to have a grass type being affected by spores. You're not going to have a grass type being affected by leech seeds. And that's something you can expect in kind of pod-based Pokemon. They're like the herbivores a lot of them are based after. Grass type people, though, they can be, and by grass type people I mean Pokemon also, can be very passive. They can be very understanding. It takes a lot to rile a grass type. Now, when you start affecting their social circle, of course they're going to fight back because they're all of one body. It's the way the forest is one living entity, the same way all the grass Pokemon in that forest are one living entity. Whether they know it or not, whether they accept it or not, they're all connected the way the ecosystem is. And so when you start affecting a grass type and you start affecting somebody in its ecosystem, you affect that grass type the same way you affect the trainer, you're affecting the Pokemon, you affect the Pokemon, you affect the trainer. Of course, that's if they're both grass type. Now, not a lot of people have actually in the PokéD&D dealt with uh, proper grass types outside of, you know, running into a few just walking through a forest. And no one's actually been to the grass type city or gym in a Pokemon uh, D&D yet either, which is why uh, I'm kind of interested. What? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious... I don't know if you guys really know much about grass types, in all honesty. Like, the types of things you guys know, uh, Lavix, like, what What are you thinking? What, what type of things do you understand? Honestly, we don't know much, or at least I personally don't know much more than what you said here about, you know, social groups and patients and... Yeah. And their patients. Yeah. And their patients. No otherwise. And their patients, and their patients, and their patients. I mean, the fact that you can't destroy a grass type without completely taking out root and stem. Well, I mean, that's if true, you know too. I mean. if, if you know what I mean. You Alright, so looking at that, you got, okay, grass type moves that can explain a little bit more about them. Uh, synthesis. They're hardy Pokemon. They take a lot of abuse, and they're used to taking a lot of abuse, like the forest is. Gets cut down, people shit at it all the time. It's just, it gets abused, and so do grass types a lot of the time. It's why a lot of people view them as the weaker typing, and a lot of people don't really like them, honestly. Which is the sad truth, but that's the beauty of grass types. They don't give a shit. Whether you like that plant or not, doesn't mean it's not going to be a plant. The same reason grass types learn a lot of cool moves, and they only learn those cool moves through, through evolutions or leveling is just because, once again, a grass Pokemon will know how to be a grass Pokemon, the way a tree knows how to be a tree, the way a blade of grass knows how to be a blade of grass. You don't tell the tree to tree, it just trees. You don't tell the bush to bush, it just bushes. You don't tell the Venusaur to Venusaur, it Venusaur. <laughs> a tree! You're a freaking tree! What you, what, you, what you doing over there, tree? Hey, quit, quit trying to do your taxes. 
Like, that you don't, tree's you don't trying to be that. a bush. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh God! Jesus Christ! We're going to pseudo widows are going to be an interesting conversation now. Mm. So, <laughs> with that being said, and grass types working, I of course I've never got to play in my own D and D world since I am the DM. But if I could, That's all damn it. Uh, yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you have all my black book secrets. That'll work out yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. But if uh -huh. I had to say anything, I would say that I have had to write one background event for myself once because of lore reasons, and that was with uh, my Pokemon. That I'm Professor Tom and all the DM D and Ds. So I always have a Venusaur as Professor Tom because Venusaur is my favorite Pokemon. It's Grass Poison. I'm Grass Poison. We're, we're, we're meant for each other, and they're my favorite. It worked out so well. I always name my Venusaurs Princess, and they're always uh, female, because I can be biased like that, because I can do things like that. And one background thing I always have is that always grass Pokemon will love two things, and that's lounging around or bathing in sunlight. They don't need to go out and get exercise. They don't need to go out on an adventure. They're bushes. They're trees. Set them in a place, give them company, and show them that they're part of some social circle and you can make them happy. Which kind of leads into what we've been talking about up to this point with water and fire types. They are easy to get along with. Now that being said, if you ignore a grass type, you can cause vengeance. The same thing as ignoring a plant. It will wither and die. Now whether or not that works in the same way as uh, personality-wise, if you ignore it socially... Your relationship can wither up and die, just like that plan I was talking about, even if you fed it. Now, there's been one example of somebody doing this, and I couldn't believe it was possible till it happened, but Vilti, you had a grass type, and you managed to piss it off so bad that it tried to kill you. Just please tell me about that, and try to argue with me about it, please to Jesus. I cared about that Pokemon just as much as in any of my Pokemon, Tom. Yeah, you never talked to it, though. Don't talk to things, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Talking is hard. I, I I understand, but that you see how things like that they can see so easy for somebody just to once a day ask up every Pokemon how they do. Maybe as you're going to bed in the it's world, not easy just for me, Tom. Oh God, you talk to one. It, Vilti has a habit. He only can connect with one Pokemon in every D and D, but yet he wants to get a full team. So he always <laughs> ends up having five Pokemon he never talks to, and one Pokemon he talks to exclusive, which. We'll talk about that later when we get into ice types, which is his primary typing. Okay, can I can I mention the tur twig that he used as a backpack? Oh god, yes, he had a, he had a tur twig once, and he just had it as a backpack for like a week straight. He didn't talk to it, he fed it, and no, he didn't even feed it because he let it do photosynthesis on his back. Didn't feed it, didn't talk to it, wore it as a backpack for a week straight. That Pokemon, bless its little heart, so lonely. All right, oh, so yeah. and then I got more grass types to be friends with it. <sighs> that is true. Then he got more grass types to be friends with it, so that he didn't have to worry about being friends with them. Like you said, it's I sad. It's sad, but that's the, that's the truth. <clears throat> that's that's the three starter types for you. Not too not too in depth, but not too shallow. Usually, great friends, great starting Pokemon. It's why they're always the starters. And uh, I've been here with Lavix. Hey, Zarayu. Have a good one. Vilti. Ding ding. God, damn it. <laughs> Little David, even though Hi. he didn't say anything. Frostwolf. Howdy. And Jordan. Who apparently died. <laughs> the Jordan Dealer you were trying to have connect a to is not present. And of course, I'm your host and DM, Tom. And until next time. Don't Go get yourself a mudkip.